Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Do you have a hero? Well, these days heroes seem to abound in the cinema, but more lately they are nurses and doctors, and grocery cashiers and delivery people. Thanks to all of you out there working to keep us all in here safe. You're all heroes. Well, today I have a very simple hero. It is my third hero fountain pen and I have to say I'm loving it. The first hero I purchased and reviewed was the Hero 565. It was like a fatter version of the Parker 51. I love the 565 and I have it clipped to a small notebook I keep on my nightstand for quick notes and jotted ideas. The pen just seems to keep going and going and going and going. You forgot about Energizer Ultra. Now let me crawl inside you. Ooh, cold. So cold. I like that pen so much I ordered this Hero 616. It is closer in size to the Parker 51 and has a really nice gold colored cap with the Parker style clip, which makes it look very much like my friend's 1950s Parker 51. So I'm excited to unbox this new hero of mine right now. <laughs> Well, unpacking. This is a hero, I believe, unless I'm missing something. Let's go ahead and speed this up. Boy, it's like gutting a fish. Okay, this is interesting. using everything to pack these days. And there we have the pen. And it is in a pen condom. This is the Hero 616. And I like it because it's a gold cap. Well, let's take it out of its condom here. And I've got a Lysol wipe to make sure. Clean off the pen, save penning, and there we go. All surfaces covered with toxic chemicals. And all packaging will be thrown out. And I will wash my hands after all of this. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the pen. First looks. Of course, the Hero Parker clip. You can almost see it there. It says Hero. This is very shiny. There's no ribbing or waving in it. And there's that gold nib. It's not gold gold. I like the way it posts very, very deeply. And you can grip it anywhere along here. And I also love this gold and burgundy look. My 565 is silver. So, I will do the routine on this pen. I will clean it out, fill it with ink, and come back and do an overview. Okay, we're back with the Hero 616. I've been using this pen for about two weeks now. I mentioned in the intro that I was using my Hero 565 clipped to my little notebook on my nightstand. Well, here's the pen. Uh, because of the price of this pen, I don't worry about getting it scratched or being knocked about. I've been writing with this Hero 565 for a couple of months now in the sort of quick jotter capacity. When the Hero 616 came in, I cleaned out the 565 and replaced it with the 616, and it's now clipped to my little notebook and in use every day. So what I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen and then show some size comparisons and some measurements. Then I'll do a writing sample and please stay tuned after the writing sample when I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like about this fountain pen. So let's start from the very beginning. A very good place to start. Start at the very beginning. I mentioned in the intro that this pen reminds me very strongly of my friend's 1950s Parker 51 which had a gold-filled cap and the same color burgundy body. The 51's cap had a vertical engraved stripe pattern on it, where this one is just plain gold colored metal. But the similarity is very strong. 
The Hero 616 has a conical finial of gold-colored metal instead of the jewel, as in the 51. Then there is the Parker-styled arrow clip. It's a bit stiff, but it is usable. The cap tapers up slightly and then ends with an engraving of some Chinese characters and the model number 616. There's a very slight step down to the barrel, which is straight until about here, where it tapers down to a rounded end, um, and there is a breather hole at the end of that uh, barrel. The cap slips off with that familiar Parker 51 kind of feeling, and reveals the long, tapered, typical section of the uh, hooded nib uh, style fountain pen, which uh, Parker 51 was the originator. And there is a, a fine steel nib and a small plastic feed. The barrel unscrews and we see an aluminum aerometric squeeze converter in the 51 style with some Chinese branding on it right there, which I assume says Hero. The 565 had a heavier chromed converter with the same markings on it, but that's a heavier material, which makes the 616 that much lighter. The section threads and the middle portion of the clutch ring are transparent, which makes this uh, act like an ink window, which is really, really handy. The uh, 565 also had that same feature to it without the clutch ring being transparent. So you had to open up the barrel on the 565 to see your ink capacity. Whereas on the 616, you can see with the barrel closed, you can still see ink sloshing around in there. It's just plain sloshed. <laughs> the cap posts very deeply and very securely and is one of the nicest and most satisfying features of this pen. The pen just feels extremely comfortable and balanced in the hand, and that tapered 51 style section allows you to write with this pen with your grip in any orientation you want. When I restored my friend's 51, I was fortunate not to have to remove the section uh, to get at that nib and the uh, the feed assembly inside there. It's not an easy thing to do. The early 51s, I think most of them were were cemented in and there's a process you have to go through to, uh, to get that off. This style of pen does not really easily allow the nib swapping or tinkering with the feed. It was designed by Parker to keep the nib and feed protected from the atmosphere and hence keep the ink from drying out. This doesn't mean you don't have to clean these pens, however, and with the non-removable aerometric converter in there, um, that makes it a little bit more difficult to clean this pen out. That's why I would recommend choosing an ink for the pen and not changing it very often. If you keep the same ink flowing in and out of this pen, you won't need to sit over a glass of water squeezing your converter like you're milking a cow for hours and hours. Hey, now where'd you get that cow? Oh, that's a silly question, Lois. I bought it so we can have fresh milk every day. <laughs> Whoa, boy, that Red Bull's some strong stuff. Yeah! Now let's look at some size comparisons. So here is the Hero 616 and a Hero 565 we just looked at and you can see the the main differences between these two pens here for a second that uh, are the the clips number one and the girth of these two pens the um, 565 is quite a bit heftier in girth uh, than the 616 but they're the same length pretty well and the other difference is the base of the 565 here on the left is flatter, whereas the 616 has a rounded 
end of the barrel. And then we have a Wingsung 601A, a Parker 45, and a Parker Sonnet. Now let's look at them posted. So here we are, the 616, the 565, this is the Wingsung 601A. You can see that this one, the 601A is different than the 601. The Wingsung 601 has a similar nib to the hooded nib on the, um, the 616 Hero in the Parker 51. This one has a tubular nib. So the 601A, and plus it has this really nice ink window as well. And look at that really nice cap. Very, very pretty. And here's the Parker 45 with its semi-hooded nib. And this was a bit of an improvement over the Parker 51 style hooded nib in that it was easier to get at them and swap out the nibs. All you have to do is give it a twist and the nib comes out. Just that quick and easy, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing up my sleeve. Presto. Again? Nothing up my sleeve. Presto. <laughs> Ooh, don't know my own strength. And the Parker Sonnet. And that uniquely shaped number five nib of the Parker. And now we'll look at some measurements. <laughs> Okay, now we're back for the writing sample portion of the review. This paper is Clairefontaine 90 GSM. And this is the Hero six one six and it has a fine steel nib. And the ink today is a Roshizuku Yamabudo. I'm really fond of the color magenta, and this ink writes in a bold magenta, but then dries darker so it doesn't scream, pink, I'm pink. I like that. It is also a very well-behaved ink, in my opinion, which writes wet and seems to be nicely lubricated. So I'm confident to fill this kind of a pen with any of my Orochizuku inks. Let's check the wetness. It's not a terrifically wet pen, but again, this style of pen very rarely writes wet. And as to line variation, here's no pressure. And there's pushing it. Nada. Well, what did you expect? A zebra G? <laughs> the nibs on these hooded pens are, by design, not flexible at all and uniformly stiff even when they are gold. I know the Parker 51 gold nib felt just like this. I can only describe the writing experience as being close to a ballpoint without it being a ballpoint. It's very uniform line with no character at all. So let's listen to it right. I find that one thing that happens when you're writing with this nib is you lose track of what the right angle is here. And so one of the tricks I have you like to use, but I didn't just now because I got my nib all out of whack, is to post the pen so that the arrow points right at the nib. 
just like that. And then I always have a visual idea of where that nib is. And for some reverse writing, it's very, very fine. It actually does flow some ink. Uh, it's very dry. And it's not all that scratchy, I'm surprised. And as to some fast writing, that skipping that you see when I'm going fast is actually me losing track of my nib. So uh, it is very sensitive to rolling the pen from one side to the other. It doesn't write on this side and it doesn't, well, it writes on the right side a little bit more. But there's a, a spot right in the center where you have to grip the pen to make it write consistently. Again, that's not a fault of this pen. It's the way the design of the pen works. So there you have it, the Hero 616. Now, what do I like about this pen and what do I not like about this pen? I know this will sound idiotic, but what I like about this pen is also what I don't like about this pen. It is completely utilitarian. It writes, it's consistent, it's dependable, and it is uninteresting. I like that I can clip it to my notebook, throw it in a bag or a case, and not worry about it. The pen is extremely comfortable in the hand, and I think it looks great. Uh, I love the gold cap and the burgundy body. It's like my poor man's Parker 51. I know that's not gold, but that's pretty. Stores are pretty, aren't they? <laughs> it is the fountain pen you want to grab when you would normally grab a ballpoint. Just say no to ballpoints, that's all I can say. No. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 The nib is stiff enough to press hard and make copies, actually. If I'm sorting through my taxes and scribbling figures on reams of foolscap, remember foolscap, anyone? Anyone? Bueller? 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 This pen will write on anything from the back of envelopes of bills to grocery receipts. And the things I don't like so much about this pen um, it's not really a writer's pen in the sense that it is a pen that you would reach for to write for the pleasure of writing. It's not something I would grab if I wanted to write a letter to someone, for example, or in my journal. Although it is comfortable to hold, even for long writing sessions, the feel of the nib and the line it creates is wholly uninspiring, as are all of the hooded nibs of the pens I've used of that style. If any of you have come across a hooded nib that is anything more than utilitarian, I'd be interested in your comments. The other thing I don't like about this pen is the filling system. I know it's in keeping with the original design of the Parker 51, but it would be nice if Hero at least allowed the unit to be removed from the pen so that you could use a regular converter or even a cartridge. Like the 45, the Parker 45 has this aerometric style or squeeze converter style, but the converter comes out. So you can actually put a cartridge in there or a converter if you like. That'd be great. I, I agree with paying homage, but there's a point at when this becomes a little bit much. This pen is a real winner, I think. Oh, I, oh, I should have mentioned another thing uh, that I love about this pen. That's the price. This pen is cheap like borscht. Come to think of it, I don't really like borscht. But I like this pen. I like that it's cheap. I got this, and I guess I shouldn't say cheap. I'm supposed to say inexpensive. And truthfully, I made a mistake. Inexpensive. It's not cheap. Actually, the materials are probably not the highest grade in the world, but it's, again, utilitarian. There's, it's very uh, nicely put together. I don't see any flaws or, or anything about the pen that makes it look substandard. So, very well built. I got this pen on eBay for six bucks US. And as you can see from the auction, I got it for less 
than the going price of six fifty by making an offer. That's one of the things I like about this eBay seller, uh, jewelry mathematics, whatever that means. He will put up an item with a make an offer button. So the pen was selling for six fifty, and I offered five fifty. He countered with six twenty, and then I went to six bucks, which he accepted. Saved a whole fifty cents. Fifty cent. That's almost $10 Canadian. Even if this pen were to stop working or to get run over by my car. And Oliver has run himself over. What a great twist. I can get another for less than a latte grande mocha cappuccino with low fat sprinkles and a wedge of lemon with my name on the cup. Dog. Okay, I have to explain that. I have to tell the truth here. I was at Tim Hortons, our Canadian coffee place, for breakfast, not for coffee as I don't drink the stuff. But I gave my name for the order, Doug. The cashier said, Dog? I said, No, Doug. Doug? No, Doug. D O. Oh, never mind. My name is Sitha Raman Narayanan. Oh, okay. But I digress again. <laughs> If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notification of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.